Season's greetings. This is the absolute value function. You should have a pretty good idea what it is already. If not, I'll leave some links in the description to my lessons introducing it. The absolute value function just gets rid of negatives. So for example, the absolute value of negative four is equal to four. One way we often think of absolute value is that it tells us a number's distance from zero. So even though negative four is negative, it's four units from zero, and so the absolute value of negative four is four. But suppose we have y equals the absolute value of x. Then this is an equation that we can graph, but what does its graph look like? And how do we graph it by hand? Well, let's take a look at how we can do just that. To begin, of course, we need a, a plane, an XY plane, a Cartesian plane, whatever you like to call it. We need a plane that we can draw this graph on. So let me draw one. There is our Y axis, and here is our X axis. Now, for this function, and for pretty much all functions that you're trying to investigate on the plane, if you wanna know what their graphs look like, you should try finding a few points on the graph, plot them, and connect them. So to do that, I'll often use what's sometimes called a T-chart, because this looks like a T. It's just a helpful way to organize a few points that will be on this graph. On the left, I've got the X column. I can just pick some nice values for X, plug them into my equation, see what Y has to be, and put those points in this chart. Again, you can pick whatever you want for X. Generally, of course, you wanna pick nice, easy values. What's nice and easy will depend on the function, but for this one, some small values of X will be perfectly fine. I don't wanna put in big values of X unless I have to, since if I have big values of X, then I might need a pretty big graph. So let's keep the numbers small. Let me try plugging in negative two for X. Once you pick an X value, you don't get to pick a Y value. The Y is determined by the X. So if X is negative two, then what's Y? Well, y is the absolute value of x, so y would be the absolute value of negative two. Again, absolute value just gets rid of negatives, so that is two. So in my chart, next to the negative two in the x column, I'll put positive two in the y column, and then negative two, two is a point on the graph of this function. So I can go ahead and put that point on my graph. I'll need to start marking this up a little bit. Let's say that's negative two on the x-axis, and there's positive two on the y-axis. So this point, negative two, two, is right about there. One point isn't going to cut it though. I'll need some more. So let's plug in another x value. Again, you can pick whatever you want. Let's say we pick zero. Zero is oftentimes a pretty nice number to work with, so I'll plug in zero for x. If x is zero, y has to be the absolute value of zero. Since zero is not negative, the absolute value doesn't change it, so the absolute value of zero is just zero. So the y that corresponds to zero is zero. Zero, zero is another point on my graph. So I'll go ahead and plot that there. That's right on the origin. So then can we say there's two points, let's connect them. Let me do my best here. Connect the two points and there's our graph, y equals the absolute value of x. No, that is what you call wrong. One reason we would know this is wrong is if we just think about what our function is. Think about what you would expect it to look like. Absolute value 
gets rid of negatives. So the absolute value can never be negative. So I know that there's no way this graph should come down here where y is negative. I can't be down there because y is the absolute value of x. An absolute value is not negative. So there's no way that this is what the graph looks like. Additionally, what's the error there in that strategy? Well, plotting two points and connecting them with a straight line, that only works for graphing lines. Now we're starting to leave the realm of graphing lines. This is absolute value. It's not just a line. So we can't use those strategies that we used for lines in order to graph something that isn't a line. For stuff like this, only two points could mislead us. We need more than two points. So let's try getting a third. We've plugged in a negative x. We've plugged in x equals zero. So let's try plugging in a positive x now. Suppose I choose x equals three. Again, it's totally up to you to pick some points, to pick some x values here. I don't have to follow any particular pattern. I'm trying to pick points that will give me a good idea of what this graph looks like. If x is three, then y is the absolute value of three. And again, absolute value doesn't change positive numbers. Absolute value of three is just three. So the y that corresponds to three is three. Three, three is another point on this graph. So let's go ahead and plot that point. Gonna look something like that. Now I can finish drawing the graph. Absolute value of x actually looks like that. It's got a very signature V shape. It's got a V shape because once we get to y equals zero on the x axis, we've got to bounce back up because we can't be negative, it's absolute value. Absolute value doesn't get negative. So that's what it looks like. Now, you may recall when we were graphing lines, there are many different things that you could do to a line. You could change its y-intercept, or maybe give it a smaller slope, or a negative slope, or a really big positive slope. There are a bunch of different lines that look a little different. Same sort of thing is true with absolute value. This is a graph of the basic absolute value function, y equals absolute value of x. But what's gonna happen if we make some transformations to it? Suppose we wanted to graph the absolute value of x with a minus two in the absolute value bars. What would that look like? Or what if we had a plus four outside of the absolute value bars? Or what if we multiply the absolute value part by three? What would this stuff look like? We'll talk about that in later lessons, but you can start to investigate what these sorts of graphs would look like in the same way that we graphed this one here. Plug in some x coordinates, figure out what y has to be, plot those points, and connect them to try to get an idea of what the graph looks like. They'll all look kind of like this. They'll all look something like a V. You just can't avoid that shape when you're dealing with an absolute value function like this. But these changes will make them look a little bit different. Before we go, let me show you one more neat thing about this graph of the absolute value function. A nice rigorous way that we can define absolute value is like this. We can say that the absolute value of a number x is x if x is at least zero. So this says the absolute value of x, if x is at least zero, is just x. It doesn't change it. On the other hand, if x is negative, so x is less than zero, then the absolute value of x will multiply it by negative one in order to make it positive. Now, do you see any connection between this and our graph of absolute value of x? Well, when x is less than zero over here on the left, we've got the line negative x 
a line with a negative slope of 1. That's what you've got for negative x values. For non-negative x values over here on the right, we've got our very familiar line y equals x, just a line with a positive slope of 1. So it's pretty cool in this nice, clear definition of the absolute value function. From just that, you could kind of see immediately what the graph has to look like. So those are the strategies we're going to use to graph some of the transformations of the absolute value function. And that's what the basic function looks like.